We've seen how we can use a LERP to cycle through colors, interpolating with a sine wave. In this video, let's use the LERP node again, but instead of passing in a function of time, let's control the T parameter using physical distance. We'll blend the colors with a position node, which contains information about our 3D geometry. Our shading effect can then take the form of a color ramp or gradient that interpolates the two colors based on the mesh's vertex positions. Okay, to do this, let's switch to a simpler shader graph since our force field shader has a lot going on right now. It'll be easier to work with the temp shader graph. So let's select that for our shader. Open that shader graph window. Here we can set up a LERP node and two colors just like the last video. Input basic color and input basic color. Convert both of those to properties. Convert to property, convert to property. And let's name these as color A and color B on the blackboard. Select a red color for color A and a yellow for color B. No need for HDR in this example. And let's join our color properties with a LERP node, math, interpolation, LERP. Connect everything together. And if you remember, our T parameter should be a value between zero and one. I'll enforce that with a math clamp node, math, range, clamp. This will prevent any weirdness in case you plug in some value outside of that range. We won't use time input or a sine wave for the T parameter. Instead, we're going to use a new node called position. You can find that under input geometry, then select position. The position node gives you access to the vertex or fragment information from your mesh. The X, Y, and Z coordinates are represented by the red, green, and blue channels of the node. The preview thumbnail shows you those correspondences. The red runs left to right for the x-axis, the green runs up and down for the y-axis, and though you can't really see it, the blue would be running in and out of the screen. The output port represents those three numbers as the red, green, and blue channels, and you can use this information to drive other operations in our shader graph. For example, let's say I want to create a color ramp or gradient from the top to the bottom of our mesh. In that case, I would use the y information about each vertex to drive the color alert. To separate the Y information only, I need to use another node called split. You can find that under channel split. The split node gives you individual access to each RGBA channel. We only want the Y information and only the green channel. So let's connect the green output port from the split and look what happens. As the Y information increases, you'll see the color lerp vertically over distance and blend from red to yellow. If you connect this into our albedo of the PBR master, you should color our geometry with this same gradient. Save the asset and let's see what this looks like in the editor. And here you go. Our gray base color has been replaced by a nice red to yellow gradient. And let's just focus on the sphere geometry. We can disable some of the effects for the scene view to make the color easier to see. We don't need the skybox or the post-processing, for example. And I'll turn off the example assets altogether so the floor geometry doesn't obscure anything. And let's disable some of these gizmos as well. I have this leftover triangle from the light probe group, and that's a little distracting. Let's toggle that off. And let's back the camera out so we can see what's happening. Essentially, our LERP is being driven by the y-coordinate of each vertex. When the y-coordinate is zero or below zero, the LERP uses the input A 100%, so every part of the sphere below y equals zero is red. When the y-coordinate of the vertex is one or above, the LERP uses input B 100%, so every part of the sphere above y equals one is yellow. And everything in between there gets a color LERP. And that's a simple and easy way to create some color variation based on distance. We now have this red yellow gradient running in the y direction. Of course, our gradient is not terribly useful 
unless you're absolutely sure that you want to blend colors between y equals 0 and y equals 1. That's pretty limiting and doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. If you want the color ramp to be more controllable, we'll need a little bit of math. For your challenge, see if you can add a couple of math nodes to modify where the origin of the color ramp starts. Currently, it's at y equals 0. If you wanted to shift it to, say, y equals negative 2, or really any y value, there's an easy way to do that in Shader Graph. Expose a vector1 property in the blackboard called origin, so you can give the user more control. And you also want to give the user the ability to spread the color ramp over a greater or shorter distance. Make another vector one called spread, and then add a couple of math nodes to let the user control how much distance to use when lerping the color over the ramp. OK, so you'll need to experiment a little bit with some math nodes and try that out for yourself. Pause the video, and then continue when you're ready. Welcome back. I hope you got that working. Let's disconnect the split node from the clamp just temporarily. And I'll make a little bit of room in here. To shift the up-down origin of the gradient where the red begins, we just need a subtract node. So let's connect the split into a math basic subtract. Let's make a vector 1 property on the blackboard called origin. Default it to 0. Drag that into the graph and connect it. And this will offset the color ramp by a specified number of units. Currently, our ramp always starts at y equals 0. If you want to change it so the ramp started at some other y value, you could just subtract, and this will shift the whole lerp range up or down. So let's try that in the editor. And to visualize this, let's make a really long or tall object. So let me create a cylinder, game object, 3D object, cylinder. Assign the force field map material in the inspector. And let me scale it up so it is super tall, like 20 units in Y. And to see the gradient more clearly, let's scale it up in the X and the Z a little bit as well. Now, it doesn't have to be anywhere in particular. Just try to get the sphere and the cylinder so you can see both of them in either the game view or the scene view. It doesn't really matter. And for now, just keep them at Y equals 0 and just slide them around the XZ plane, something like that. If you select the force field map material in the inspector, either as part of the sphere or the cylinder, you should now have an origin control that you can change. Adjust the origin value in the inspector, and you'll see that you can change the starting point of the ramp. The region where the red and yellow blend together can now shift up or down. And our cylinder sort of resembles a thermometer as we do that. If you want to verify your numbers, I suggest that you bring in another object like a cube, game object, 3D object, cube, scale it so it's really flat and wide. I'll choose like 0 0.01 in the Y scale. Shift it around so you can use it as a gauge just to make sure that our origin value is correct. So let's say we set the origin at Y equals negative 2. And we also put the cube at Y equals negative 2. If we did everything right, they should match. And you can test it further, but they should always match up for any y value. Now, it shouldn't matter if you move the sphere or the cylinder. Everywhere the vertices are greater than the origin value in y, the geometry should turn yellow. Everywhere below that origin value, it should turn red. And then there's some transition that happens in between the colors, so it's not so abrupt. OK, well, that's part one. We can change the origin of our color ramp vertically. Let's revisit our shader graph. To control how the color ramp transitions from color to color, let's create a new vector 1 in the blackboard, and we'll call that spread. And let's limit what value we allow the user to enter here. And I'll adjust this to become a slider, mode slider. And let's define the min as 0 0.1 and the max as 10. And that's arbitrary. Mostly, I don't want to allow the user to enter 0 as a value because you'll get an error if you do that, and you'll see that shortly. So drag this into our graph. And just to be redundant, let me pipe this into a clamp. And I'll just clamp this value between 0 0.1 and 10 again, just in case you accidentally change the min and max in the blackboard. Again, anything that's greater than 0 should work fine here. 
Now in our graph, we can spread our gradient through space with a simple divide node. Math, basic, divide. Then connect that to the clamp. And here's why I didn't want to allow the user to set the value to zero. You'll get a divide by zero error if you're not careful. But basically, this is our working graph. If you use a larger number, then you'll expand the color ramp. If you use a smaller number, the ramp will become tighter and change over a shorter distance. Remember that we're just converting y position values and mapping those onto a range between t equals 0 and t equals 1 to feed into the LERP. And really, that's all that we're doing. You can confirm that for yourself, save the asset, and then let's go back to the editor. In the inspector, adjust the spread slider. And together with the origin, you can change where the ramp begins and how long it takes to lerp from one color to another. OK, great. Go ahead and play with that to make sure that you understand how it works. In the next video, we'll briefly discuss the differences between world space and object space position, and then apply a little bit of logic to switch between the two. All right, so stay tuned for that next.